morning forever. Yeah, good morning forever. And uh, for to our guest, we say good evening, but in forever, we say good morning because forever it is a 24 hours business. So like now we are here in the evening, about uh, within the next few hours, we think of going to bed. In another part of the world, they are just waking up to do forever. So forever is a 24 hour business. So we always say good morning forever. So um, welcome for those who are here for the first time. And uh, my name is Joseph Mwede Kelly. I'm a very excited member of this amazing company, Forever Living Products. It's been, an, uh, it's been a wonderful journey for the past 28 years. I love forever, I dream forever. Everything about me is about forever. And uh, I believe so much in it, uh, especially in the products, because uh, without the products, I would not be speaking to you here. Uh, I would not be here talking to you this evening. And uh, because I got to know forever through medical challenges I had many, many years ago, we're talking about 29 years. So uh, forever actually gave me my life back. This is why if anybody is saying that, oh, the product today work, I said, look at me, I'm a living testimony of uh, this amazing products forever. So they do work provided that people do comply. So we are so fortunate to have a scientific, natural scientifically researched uh, food supplement in forever, very, very important. So uh, let me get a start because I have so many slides to present to you this evening. So, uh, and if you're attending my training, I always tell people, you really need to listen to me intently because sometimes I do get excited. I get, to, I go on so fast and quickly. And uh, for those, uh, many of you are used to me, and those who are new, you've never heard me present it before, do listen intently and uh, take notes. And uh, again, in forever, if you're new, we always say that uh, you, there are some words I'll be using. I will not be using a lot of medical jargon because you want to keep it simple. That's forever way. But just in case if I use anything, any words you do not understand, you really need to go back and search. And uh, you know, internet, we're so blessed with internet. It's got a wealth of information. So in forever, we said it's a very, very important you read. You, it's very important that you read. If you don't read, you get records of the mind. So we read, we research, always uh, again, because of the lot, uh, I'm gonna be giving a lot of information. Uh, the, brain, uh, the brain may not have the capacity to take in all the information. This is why you need to be writing, making notes. Unless you are on a product which we do not have in this country yet, which is called Forever Focus. That's a fantastic food supplement for the brain, for memory retention. So if you are not yet on that, fortunately I am. <laughs> I meant to get them from another country. If you are not yet on that, then you need to actually take notes of uh, the presentation for today. Okay, the reason the, top, the topic for today is to do with uh, um, understanding and management of uh, toxic uh, colon syndrome. And the reason why I've chosen this topic today is because the month of uh, uh, the month of March is being declared as uh, uh, the uh, is uh, is the month that uh, is uh, to do with awareness for colon anything to do with uh, the colon. Uh, in other words, the big intestine, so colonic uh, colonic health, and anything associated with the uh, colon, be it uh, cancer. This is now the month is being declared for awareness. Very very important. And we are in Africa, unfortunately, uh, because of changes in our diet and lifestyle, everything is changing, we eat a lot of Western food. So what never, with the type of disease, we never use, excuse me. Sorry, somebody's disturbing me here. Oh, the, the type of disease we never used to see before, we are now, they're on the increase in this part of the world in Africa because of uh, the changes in our diet, it's been, uh, we're eating a lot of uh, junk food and all that. And again, from if you were, uh, if you tune in much earlier, we, there was a video which uh, uh, showing uh, the source of some of the food we consume nowadays, which is also can be very toxic to the digestive system. So today, part of the focus is on digestive health, especially when we're dealing with the big intestine known as the colon. So without further ado, let me move on. Uh, that's the title, to understanding and the management of toxic colon. You can see there, very, very important. That's me, some years ago. You can see the statement here, 
it's saying that uh, the gut health is critical for good health. And obviously it's the gateway to your health. The, the digestive system is very, very important. And uh, why? Because 95% of many, many medical challenges goes back to the digestive system because uh, it's got, you know, is uh, basically it says that's where you have uh, your immune system. Seventy percent of your immune system is based in the digestive system. Uh, your all those uh, uh, hormones they are based in the digestive system, and through the digestive system, there's a connection between the the digestive system and the brain. So if you if you are not eating well, you eating rubbish, it's going to affect your cognitive function. So the area we're going to be talking uh, talking about today is the big intestine. So let me move on. Nature is the best medicine, as the best physician. This was uh, Hippo, uh, Hippocrates, and uh, then uh, the father of Western medicine, a Greek guy in those days, who that was the statement made by him. Let me move on. Very very important. Now, dealing with toxic swollen uh, colon uh, syndrome, Natu the natural way of managing any condition to do with the big intestine. That's what the topics will be about today. First of all, the, I would like to, uh, for those who are new, and uh, there's a quiz here. Uh, you can see here, this is your brain, all right? And uh, where does your second brain actually sit? You can see here, that's the query, that, that's the question, and that's the question here. Where does it, so that's the brain, which is number one. The second one, where does it, where does it, where, where, what do we mean by the second brain? Where does it sit? So this is the question for some of you. Uh, let me move on to help you because uh, there's no time to, if I uh, just to be training, physical training, then I'll be looking at you and see which one of you is gonna answer. So since it's on the, on Zoom, and so let me move on to rescue you from there. So the second brain, as you can see, is the digestive system. You can see the digestive system, which is like from the mouth all the way to the anus. It's a long tube. God is an amazing God. Everything, all of us all packed together. You know, it's uh, very, very, very interesting. So if you take out the entire uh, digestive system from the mouth to the anus, you can stretch it out, it can cover the whole of a small football pitch. That's how wonderful God has made this uh, specific area of the, of, the, of the system. Let me move on. So uh, they, they said that, as I've already mentioned this, that the digestive system is, uh, is the cornerstone for many, many uh, medical challenges. And unfortunately, traditional medicine often don't, they don't understand the significant role of the digestive, which the digestive uh, uh, system plays in the management of patients. And especially when you're dealing with patients with chronic health complaints, they do not understand. It's very, very important. Now, the question I'm gonna be asking some of you, those who are on the platform for the first time, is how healthy are you? Are you very, very healthy? You know, some people, they say they are healthy. There's nothing wrong with them. There's no, they don't need our products because they feel good, but they don't even realize that there's something that because of the rubbish we're eating nowadays, we are not 100% healthy. You know, uh, you, don't, you don't wait to become sick before you can say yourself that, oh, you are not, uh, you, are, you, 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 are, you are in full bloom of health. Because, uh, you know, Nowadays, with all the garbage, we cannot 100% guarantee that we're consuming the type of food that our great-great-grandparents used to eat in the olden days. Now, food comes in packets. Anything that comes in packets, very, very wary of them. So let me move on. So you can see here, and let me move the, this one a bit away. This is a baby, a very innocent baby here, OK? And uh, as you can see from this, what, uh, what uh, is written here, a great day begins with a smooth move. Yeah. So with the, she's, the baby is very happy because she's able to exit whatever has been deposited within the big intestine. She's happy because she's able to exit, which many of us, we are not able to do. In, not, in, in most normal circumstances, 
We should be able to empty our digestive system about on daily basis, on regular basis. We should be like a baby. If you remember, if you notice babies, after food, within a few minutes of eating, they're able to exit. To uh, what, may, what do I mean by exit? They're able now to pass through. So they, they, that's the normal way. But when, when I, because of the rubbish we are eating nowadays, we don't, that's, no, first of all, all of us should be doing that. We should be, be able to exit like babies. Very, very important. But when you ask some people, they don't even feel the toilet for sometimes two weeks. Some, something is definitely wrong. This is the area we're gonna be focusing on today. Let's move on. So this is the digestive system. Um, this one's blocking. All right, this is the entire, okay. Okay. Okay, this is the entire digestive system. And uh, you have the stomach there, okay, from the stomach. That's the gallbladder, that's anus. You have the uh, small intestine, ni nicely packaged there. You have the big intestine there, which we refer to as the colon. We have the ascending, okay, ascending colon, that's the transverse, then descending part of the colon up, ex going through the sigma, uh, yeah, there, then to the anus to exit. Very, very important, or the rectum. So that's, that's, that's the entire one, which I said, you can stretch and cover a whole small football pitch. So now, uh, this one, okay. all right, this, uh, this, these are some of the signs that, uh, uh, that we are now having or experiencing what I refer to as toxic overload. So here are some of the clues of real problems. Like number one, does your belly remain stubbornly bloated? You know, some people, I had a lady this afternoon, she was telling me that she's feeling bloated, she's feeling gassy, she doesn't feel good. And then uh, that's a miss, you know, it, when I hear people telling me that, it means that they're actually in trouble. Something maybe to do with irritable bowel syndrome, and it's all those things associated with the digestive system. The whole pack is not healthy. So you find that, uh, you find some of them, they, they, are, they can't even, they, say, they start feeling funny. They, they can't even do their belt properly, the guys. And uh, as you can see here, he said, do you sit on the toilet for two, for a long period? Obviously, if you're sitting on the toilet for too long, you're grunting, you're straining, you've got to, you, you, there's, there's a big problem there. So you find that after sitting some of them because of wrong diet, you find that uh, they get disappointed because some of them, they start passing to like uh, rabbits, rabbit pallets, or you can see there. And sometimes it's not even just constipation, sometimes maybe just a watery discharge, which also tells me there is an issue with the, within the digestive system. Do you sometimes go for days, as I said, without having, satisfying, uh, having a satisfying empty bowel movement? Some people nowadays, they do that. This is why I said sometimes two weeks, some people, they don't even visit, visit the toilet. So there's an issue there. Number four, do you find yourself resorting to laxative, all those uh, things they push through the backside or even sloppy and you know, those animals they use because they're having issues with constipation to get things moving again down there. So some people, they suffer in silence. They can't, no, I remember uh, I went to see somebody last week and she was telling me, she didn't even need to tell me she, that her digest, her digestive system was in trouble. As she was sitting next to me, she was passing wind both ends. I said, oh, well, you don't need to tell me, I know there's a problem there, so I'm here to help you to sort it out. So this is what is happening most of the time to many, many people. Some people, as I said, they suffer from um, they start bloating, feeling bloated, too much gas. Obviously, if you are suffering from toxic overload, you find that because of those toxins, the toxins within the colon, you find that uh, you get, you know, it can result into headache. You find that, uh, you know, with pain, the resultant effect is constant headache all the time, which shows there's something wrong within the digestive system. They feel tired most of the time. And no nausea, too much belly fat. You are, they have skin issues because the toxin cannot exit. So they start having skin rashes. They start having pimples because of too much toxin within the system. And they have cravings for food, obviously, as a uh, low energy, which is a form of fatigue. 
Okay, some of them, as soon as they open their mouth, <clears throat> it's like a latrine. It's just terrible, terrible stench, which means something is definitely wrong down there within the digestive system, within the colon. So the way all those things, they're sort of, uh, the, the, the stench is coming from the, from the big intestine, up coming and through the mouth. And also they tend to suffer from mood swings. You know, there's a connection, as I said, between the brain and the digestive, and the, and the digestive system. So the, because of that, the, the brain, you know, they, it affects the brain and they start to suffer from mood, mood swings. They're not normal. So you can see constipation in most, if constipation, when basically this is what today, today, let me get, get back to today. I'm just going to be focusing on toxic overload to do with the colon. Next week is going to be part two. Next, we're going to be talking about cancer of the colon. So that's the first one is uh, how can we maintain good, healthy colon today? So if uh, the next one is going to be if one is constantly, or if you suffer from chronic con constipation, it eventually, if it's not corrected, it can eventually uh, become cancerous. So that's the effect of uh, constant uh, or chronic constipation. So you can see here, this guy is actually in pain. It's holding onto his stomach because uh, there's too much gas. The digestive system is really, really in trouble. And now what do they do? They start to look for all those uh, pain relieving medication. And I can tell you the body, the stomach is not deficient or the body is not deficient of paracetamol. It's not deficient of uh, all those non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. What is deficient of is good balanced uh, diet. So don't suffer from constipation. So as you can see here, it's your colon swollen with uh, kilos of toxic decaying old poo because as you can see, because that is not a laxative job. It's not. It's something which can be done. They, you know, the laxative, laxative job is just for a temporary issue to relieve, but the proper way is what we're going to be talking about. The long-term basis where you don't need to be looking for laxative to get, to get rid of those toxins within the um, big intestine. So to have a smooth flow, it should be not a natural, easy process, as you can see in the diagram. In the diagram, uh, when we're dealing with the big, big intestine here, you find that um, they, they say that we have what you call a set of muscle. The muscle is connected with the nerves, so they, they all work together. And you, when you, the, for a good bowel movement, the nerves start to tell you to signal connecting with the brain that you need to empty your bowel. Then that's when now uh, the muscle is is uh, it relaxes the muscle so it can create a smooth, easy exit for that uh, uh, for the feces which is present. So that's what you can see there. The movement of that muscle is called peristalsis. Forget about that jargon, okay? That's the movement of uh, how the muscle contracts to, uh, to let the uh, waste matter, to let it exit. Very, very important. So you can find that's what happens. It lives there and it goes there and go back to the rest of the body to exit. Let's move on. This is uh, so as you can see, this guy is having issues. So out at a damn pool, okay. <laughs> and uh, you can see this this guy is in trouble. He's in trouble in the toilet. He's trying to he, he's, he's trying to exit and he's in pain. You can see him sort of uh, oh, well, it's really really tense. The same thing with the woman there. So she's really really in pain. This is what we don't want. This is what this is what uh, we want to avoid in this presentation today, so we don't become a victim of toxic uh, colon syndrome. So you can see here, you, this, uh, this part of the big intestine, you can see the impacted feces there. And when you, have been, when you are constipated, the feces can stay there for, and the longer the, the feces stays there, the less, you know, the more it, it, gets, no, it gets dry because the water now is it's no longer soft, the water gets back into the system. So it gets so hard. And what happens when it stays there, you're not able to exit because you're constipated. Now the bacteria around that area, they start eating on, those, on that uh, impacted feces, and you get, you get what you call putrefaction. That's where you get that stench. And, uh, and they start producing toxin. And when toxin is being produced inside the inner lining of the big intestine, 
what happens? That area gets inflamed. And you know, with inflammation, you know, inflammation, you get pain. And uh, with uh, constant inflammation, the, the bad news, if it's not corrected, you get ulceration. When you get ulceration, you get start bleeding. Okay, within the inner lining of the, that area of the big intestine, you get build, build, um, bleeding because of ulceration. And if ulceration, no, that area becomes weak. And if it's not looked after properly, that's how cancer actually starts because that area, that part of the inner lining is being weakened. So this is why sometimes when you, when people you want to know what, what is actually happening, uh, which is what I'm going to talk about later, different, uh, different method of, uh, of examination or diagnosis, you find that because of the area that due to inflammation leading to ulceration, you find that when they, by the time they pass stool, there's the blood inside that stool. And this is what sometimes they ask in the lab and you know, to bring their stool and that they, they, they can now detect whether there's the area is actually, they, they can tell what is wrong with the area because you, you find some in part of the stool is, is inside the part of that stool, there's blood, we call it occult blood. So that's all the test, the part of the test, they do it in the lab to find out that, okay, there's a problem within this uh, area of the big intestine. So that's, the, that's what happens uh, when due to chronic constipation, okay? And you can see here, this is inside the inner lining of the big intestine, we call it intestinal mucosa. So inside there, you can see every, the built up of a, a pool, okay, of feces, it's all, it's uh, accumulates, and you can see it becomes toxic as already mentioned, and you start to petrify. So when this happens when elimination is incomplete and you find the old feces start to build up in there, so on the wall, as you can see all this brown bit of the colon and start to petrify as already mentioned. And this, if it's not taken, up, taken care of, can eventually cause uh, uh, health problems and it causes pain and a lot of discomfort. We don't want that, let's move on. So you, your colon can be as tall as you. So if you extend that colon, uh, the length of the colon is about 1.5. That's about 1.5 uh, meters, okay? And uh, for female, we are, for female, our colon is uh, it's about 10, cent, 10, um, 10 centimeters longer than the male, okay? So because we have a lot of other things to pack, we have the hormones working there and all that. So I think there's a reason why God made that created extra length of the big intestine for women, okay? So that's, there's a, this is a swollen colon which can add weight. You know, some people, uh, because this, it's got impacted feces, you find that you are carrying a lot of weight yeah, it's because uh, you have not been able to exit and that makes you feel, you know, makes you look fat and you feel sluggish because of this uh, toxic uh, garbage within the uh, big intestine. You can see here, so you are not fat, you just, you just got swollen colon, uh, colon, okay? Trying to uh, zip up, there's a problem within the digestive system with the big intestine there. So it's, um, who doesn't dread being constipated? You know, you find that with constipation, obviously you get immobilized uh, traffic jam, which, and uh, you find that many people, they pass uh, fewer than three bowel movements per week, which is very, very serious nowadays because of all the junk food they're eating. And majority of the people, they, as I said before, uh, they are not completely emptying their bowels, and you get all this uh, built, built up of nasty waste every day. That's just different from the way nature intends. So here you can see the uh, area of the big intestine again, the way God made it through here. Look at this one. This is the normal way of getting rid of uh, waste product, the waste feces passing through there. You can see all God has made it so wonderful. You have this uh, spinster muscle which contracts when you want to exit. So you can see there, that's the rectum, the stool is still around here, waiting to exit through the anus. That's the normal way. Then look at here, more stool forms back. So some, because of constipation, you find that you're not able to exit. You find sometimes the, the stool you know, goes back again. 
which is very unfortunate, okay? So it gets, sometimes it gets stuck in between the inner lining of the big intestine, okay? And uh, as a result of that, you can get enlarged, the, the rectum can become dilated, enlarged due to chronic constipation. And what is the resultant effect? Sometimes due, because of that, you know, people they suffer from what you call hemorrhoids or pile, okay? Because it's causing a lot of pressure on the, on the blood vessels. Okay. Very, very important to note that. I hope you're learning a bit about the anatomy of the, um, the colon. So this is what I was saying before. I didn't even know I have this picture here. So due to constant straining, constant constipation, what has happened, the resultant effect is hemorrhoids or piles. You can see this vein here. You can get hemorrhoids both internal, it could be internal or external, depending on the location of the blood vessels. You can see here, so you find that this is engorged with blood. So when they due to constipation, sometimes that's how they start, uh, start to bleed. That's external hemorrhoids due to just stress, straining. That's also, you can see here, stress can worsen the, the presence of uh, piles because it's all connected also to the nerves, as already mentioned. This is this guy, this is uh, an example of uh, somebody who, had, who has been diagnosed with toxic uh, colon. This is uh, from the theater. You can see, remember I said the, the length of the big intestine is 1.5 meters, okay? For the guys, men, for women about, just about uh, 10 centimeter ex um, extra length, okay? So here, this guy is, is in trouble, so they have to actually remove the colon surgically. You can see how, you cannot guess the content. You see how big it is, it's already, because it's inflamed, this guy must, uh, you know, in trouble, basically. So you can see here the, uh, the surgery, this is a, a surgical, um, uh, after surgery, surgical removal. So you can see the surgeries, well, obviously they were able to save this patient's life. And once they remove this area, this, the patient will have to be wearing uh, a bag. So uh, with this type of, once they remove this part of the colon, they often, they have to be wearing a bag or call it, uh, I don't want to be too any tech, anything technical. So they have to, if they wear a bag all the time to if, uh, for the feces to, to be going through. This is a very, very serious case of constant, of which started from just being constipated. Now it's, it's uh, ended up being, sort of ending up being uh, that area being surgically removed. Very, very serious. So um, you find that, uh, there's this association with the immune system. This immune system is also weakened due to the buildup of all these toxins within the big intestine. And yes, as, I, as I told you, because of that inflammation, you get infection, you get lots of, uh, which result in pain. And uh, all sorts of things start to happen they become, because the body becomes poisoned from its own waste. You know, remember I told you about those uh, bacteria now producing um, dog toxins. This is this when when the the uh, bacteria start now to produce to uh, putrefy, the system start all the stench start coming up. Um, now this that the name for that uh, scenario is no, is is known as auto -intoxic intoxi intoxication. That's the that's the big word auto intoxication. And you find that this cause of uh, this is this is usually the cause of over ninety percent of all diseases of what is happening nowadays, which is very very sad. As I already told you, over ninety percent of medical challenges start from the digestive system. So this is another one. This is confirmed the actual. This again, this was uh, from somebody already moved on. This is another one. Obviously, they can't save the life of this person because it's too much. You can see how it. How <laughs> I can't, even, I don't even want to describe it, but it's a terrible, terrible situation that this person could not make it. So, now, how does it start when we're talking about uh, this uh, toxic colon? You know, in some patients or in some people, you find that uh, you, within the digest, inner lining of the digestive system, you start, you start, you know, they do what you call endoscopy. Endoscopy is where they now put a light object, I'll describe it later, through the pass through the anus, and they can see what is happening within the digestive system. You can see here, just to make it more life to you, for some of you are here for the first time, you know, we call it polyps. What are polyps? 
polyps are benign. They are not malignant. They are not cancerous. It's, it's just growth. Growth, you can see all this growth within the inner lining of the digestive system. You can see all this growth and you call it polyps. And uh, if it's not removed, okay, it can actually eventually lead to cancer of the, uh, of the colon. Called, there's, there's small, small growth, okay? So it's always very, very important to have them removed so that they don't grow and become cancerous. So this is what I'll be talking about next week. Let's move on. So this is uh, to bring the picture closer to you. This is the inner part of the big intestine, the colon. It's nice, nice and smooth. You can see that. Now through uh, uh, that, once that light is passed through uh, during the procedure called colon uh, colonoscopy. So you can see that's it. That's, these are the polyps I was talking about. Those bubbles, bubbles growth. They are not yet cancerous, okay? And you can find that also when you are trying to uh, pass um, motion, some people, they feel pain because of this growth within the inner lining of the big intestine. So uh, according to the great physician I mentioned earlier on, Hippocrates is said that uh, death begins in the colon. It's the seat, the death begins in the colon. For me, because I know there's a solution, I always say that health begins in the colon because I know with what we do, that we can reverse that situation provided that people, they seek for medical advice quickly. They go for diagnosis quickly, very, very important. So we don't end up like that. So what, I, what, is, actually, what is actually interrupting your natural flow? What, what can cause that? The most common causes that you can see there, you now some people, they need to go to the toilet, maybe, especially in certain situations, you find that uh, you are not at home, your, your normal environment, you find that you see the, the toilet, especially public toilet, good Lord, I don't even want to describe it. <laughs> I had that bad experience when I was traveling from Ghana, going to Nigeria about eight, eight years ago. Now, I, was, I wanted to go to the toilet and uh, I, was, I didn't know what to do. I went to the, I was shown where the toilet was and it was a latrine, as soon as I saw it, whatever, just disappeared. So sometimes you can't help it. You can, you know, you don't, you, it's, not, you, it's not that you're actually ignoring it. In some, in some in most kinds of circumstances, you're not ignoring the urge to go, to empty your bowel. But uh, in some cases, some people, they delay. So that can, the longer you delay going to empty, the worse the situation uh, gets because you find the, the the water keeps on now it gets uh, it, it gets it goes back to the rest of the body then the stool gets harder, ends uh, constipation. So and the, again another cause and the most another most common causes of uh, toxic colon is when people the diet is wrong they are not eating enough dietary fiber no they eat they consume too much highly processed food which is happening more and more nowadays. And when you ask some of them to eat salad, they will say, God, salads are they're just meant for goats and uh, cows, not for them. But they don't understand the importance, the importance of uh, dietary uh, fiber. So uh, medical condition, you find that one in three diabetic patients, they suffer from constipation. This is a known fact, okay? And uh, again, due to depression, some people, because of depression, you find that the body, you know, the body slows down, and uh, again, another thing that you, one of the side effects of uh, the treatment for depression, which is uh, anti antidepressant, they are known to actually interfere with the muscular motion around that area I showed you earlier on, that they call the, is referred to as peris peristalsis. So it's, uh, uh, you find that uh, the muscle is uh, it's not, normal it's not it's not able to move to exit the stool as normal that's one of the side effects of uh, of uh, uh, being on uh, for a long time on antidepressant the conventional treatment for depression so that can be one of the causes of uh, constipation some of these medications also they are known to cause uh, people to be passing stool like goats or like rabbit pallets so you can see some of these uh, and all, all this uh, uh, conventional medication they are known for that. Even antibiotics, all these things, antihistamines, they are all known to cause, uh, to cause the system to, to start blocking up, okay? All these non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, which are conventional treatments, they are known to cause, to cause constipation. 
And again, due to aging process, you find old people because again, maybe because you diet, because old people, they tend to have a very poor diet, poor appetite. So you, they tend to suffer from constipation. It's very, very common, especially those ones who are over the age of 70 or older. So they can, they can be experiencing a constipation. As for female gender, women are three, three, two to three times are likely to, um, is a fee, okay, women are two to three times as likely than men to suffer from uh, constipation. For me, I don't believe this because again, I find that uh, when, uh, this from a research, okay, for me, I dispute this because for women, especially when they're at a certain younger age, when they are having their periods, they tend to have more bowel movement, okay? Especially with good, good diet. I've already mentioned about stress, uh, being responsible for constipation. So there's a connection, as you can see, a connection, a direct connection between the, uh, when we're talking about stress and emotion because of the central nervous system with the nerves. So again, nowadays we are having all this, uh, this thing they are spraying on the farm. One of the uh, reasons for uh, constipation, the exposure to glyphosate. Glyphosate is uh, part of the ingredients in the roundups. You know, I've, I've mentioned about glyphosate before. It's, uh, it's a toxin, environmental toxin. So people are exposed to that are also known to have, uh, to uh, suffer from constipation according to research. So look at all these different types of medication, they call opioids, like painkillers. So they are known to cause, to affect the movement of uh, those uh, deposits or feces within the digestive system. They make them dry and very hard, and this can lead, the side effect is uh, leading to toxic swollen uh, colon. And uh, let me move on. So here, we have the digestive, the colon again here. And within the colon, the big intestine is, uh, we have trillions and trillions of, uh, I call them micro, microbiome, okay? Which is the population of yeast, bacteria, fungal. Okay, they're all present there. And uh, you know, for your information, we are more bacteria than human cells. Yeah, we are 90% bacteria, only 10% human. I mentioned this in my previous training before. And uh, so this, uh, this, we each adult, we carry a, a lot. We, are, we carry uh, this uh, population of good and, bad, back, uh, good and bad bacteria within the big intestine. That's where they reside. And when you start using something like uh, antibiotics, they actually disturb the, uh, they kill because they are not specific. They kill both the good ones and the bad ones. Then your immune system goes down. That's what happens due, due to taking antibiotics. And obviously, also your immune system is also challenged because of the side effects of the medication, and uh, you get a bad gut. All those microbes because of uh, using those uh, conventional medication, and you get increase in inflammation and ends. You know, when you get inflammation, the conventional way is to use antibiotics and antibiotics is, is detrimental to that area because it kills those, the good ones and the bad ones. And as a result of that, what happens? Poor quality of life. Let me move on. And again, you find, according to research, those people who are, who are obese, also they found that uh, they have different types of bacteria and uh, they, they, they have issues also uh, with their digestive system. Let me move on. Now you find that in Kenya, about 70% of uh, antibiotics, they go into, uh, no, they go into, uh, into, the, into the animals. Like the cows, the cows nowadays, apart from not eating grass, they are not eating grains because uh, grains is not meant, it's not natural and the way because of the digestive system of the cows. So, so because they are feeding them on grains, so it becomes, which is causes inflammation. So because of that inflammation, they have to now use antibiotics. And who are the end consumers of those antibiotics? It's us, we meat eaters. So this is why sometimes we find that if you have, if you're sick, you start taking the antibiotics, they do not, they become resistant because you're already consuming it in whatever meat you are eating. Apart from also being those with a lot of hormones and those gross hormones. So here, uh, this is also the misuse and abuse of uh, antibiotics also, which has got a uh, negative impact on the, on this uh, colon. 
This is the picture of what I was telling you about before. You see, this is how the colon, the, God, the way God made the colon to be the big intestine. It's got all these varieties of those microbiomes. So very, very important to, for good, healthy colon. And once you start taking them, what happens? They disappear. They say goodbye. You can see the effect here. Antibiotics just clears them off. Then you start having other medical uh, challenges. So what, uh, what is actually, as we continue, what is actually interrupting the natural flow, you find that uh, is, as I mentioned before, it's chronic inflammation. And again, if you are the time you always uh, on coffee, tea, coffee, tea, you know, those are stimulants. They also, uh, especially when it's dosed with a lot, of, a lot of sugar, causing inflammation. So that also can affect the normal flow. Uh, of the digestive system. People consume dairy products. and uh, the dairy products we're consuming nowadays is not like the one, the natural one in the olden days. It's full of hormones. It's more, as I said, antibiotics, name it. Okay. And again, as you can see, there are too much con consumption of alcohol. Alcohol is an oxidant and it's got terrible negative impact on that area of digestive system on the colon. We are a nation in Kenya, we're a nation of uh, Yamachoma. We consume so much meat without a uh, fiber, and meat is not easy to digest. And you find the meat can also cause constipation, especially many people, they you know uh, with the situation nowadays, you get increased in the, the consumption of alcohol combined with all this type of meat. You don't you know, you cannot pass normal stool when you your, if your diet revolves around this without any of the fiber that you need to get the push to prevent constipation. And we are getting more and more of this junk food. You can see the, the void of nutrients, just full of, I call it junk food. You can see there all these things. Now those sausages, uh, the favorite here, which is uh, full of all those nitrates, which is toxic to the digestive system. You can see all these ones. These are just garbage, junk, empty calories. And this is what many people consume nowadays and they expect to be healthy. No way, you cannot have healthy, good movement with this, with the consume this type of food on regular basis. Very, very important. You can see that's, a, now that's chapati here, which is a part of the popular food here. And you see that's the processed white flour. You know, wholemeal is what we now recommend because uh, this is highly processed. It's deficient of many, many vitamins and minerals. And again, you can see there it's going to cause constipation unless you combine it with a lot of salad or uh, raw vegetables. Look at this food, the food here. This is, uh, you can see what we got here, uh, made from maize. I'm saying it because other people are attending this presentation from another part of the world. So this is Kenya's favorite. You can see that's supposed to be vegetable. It's been boiled, or boiled to death, deficient, uh, de void of a lot of essential nutrients. So, and uh, that's meat there. And that's supposed to give us a good uh, bowel movement. You're joking, you will not have it. You'll be super, super constipated if you are eating this on a regular basis. This is all the part of the junk I'm talking about, the void of essential nutrients, because all this, and you want to be well, no way, no. So, and again, another thing, the constipation is due to not drinking enough water, especially I noticed the, in the, uh, the old people, they seem to be um, allergic to water. And many, many, not only the old people, okay, even some, many people, they, when we're talking about taking water, they think of chai water, or they think of all those uh, carbonated drinks, which some are full of sugar, full of a lot of colorings, all those additives. That's not good. It's, gonna, it's not going to create a good, healthy uh, colon. And again, if you're always sitting down, you don't exercise, also you, the, you can, that can affect that area of the digestive system. Uh, because when you don't exercise, you get impacted feces. You need to move the body. You need to get exercise. I'll be talking about that later as we proceed. So what is the solution? Many people, because they're in pain, they reach out for all those pain, painkillers, as I told you about the side side effect of painkillers. Some of them, they can give you what you call leaky gut syndrome. They can damage the inner lining of the digestive system. And now the end result, you start having what you call autoimmune disease because of the damage they cause to the inner lining of the digestive system. Those even antibiotics, all those uh, pain uh, killers or pain relieving medication, those are the side effects. And many people, because they want a quick solution, because they fail to, to, to follow the normal uh, health diet. So what did they look for? They start looking for laxity. 
and we know with laxative, it can is known to actually damage the nerves. They want to create, you know, which is, makes you to want to go to the toilet. And uh, again, that can affect the normal bowel movement. Okay. And another one they use, they sell senna, senna cut. That's the name for that uh, leaves you get from the, you can get it from the chemist. And um, it's, it's natural, but uh, the side effects of you boil it, you drink it in order to create, to, to create smooth bowel movement. So, but again, you find that when you drink this type of uh, uh, sedative or laxative, you find that it can actually, one of the side effects is, uh, it, one of the side effects is it actually depletes your body of uh, minerals, okay? So you start having uh, cramps. So very, very important, although it may be natural, but it's also got its own side effect. Let me move on. And uh, common side effect of uh, Zena, okay, abdominal pain. This, uh, when you boil those leaves, this comes, you start getting cramps because uh, it creates deficiency in the, like magnesium. You need magnesium to help, very, very important for muscle, muscular movement. And also it destabilizes all those electrolytes and like low, can cause low potassium, which is very, very important for uh, your bodily function. Can also, you can become, uh, suffer from nausea. So uh, in most cases, uh, when people, some people, when they start having issues with constipation, what did they do? I don't even see them here. Not many of them, like in, in about 10 years ago, 50 years ago in Nairobi, we used to have all those uh, clinics. They were just all over Nairobi. They call them colonic irrigation clinics or hydrotherapy clinics. So I don't see they're they are not as popular as before. And, uh, you know, these clinics, what they specialize there, they, you know, they deal with constipation because they said that, okay, if you're having issues with constipation, as already mentioned, you need to clear. So what did they do? First of all, when you go to the clinic, they give you yogurt because they think yogurt is going to help you to build up. Uh, because during now, why did they give you yogurt? They, you know, let me, let, let me reverse, let me reverse. Okay, when you go to the clinic, they're, they're, you, they're very, very expensive. Uh, that's about 5,000 Kenyan shillings per session. They may say you need about five sessions to be able to dislodge that in that impacted feces. So um, they, they put water through the, uh, through the backside to flush there. They put some medications there. And they, in the process, they pro one of these negative effects of uh, colonoscopy, in the process, they tend to damage the nerves that makes you want it to go to go into your bowel. And again, they can disrupt the balance of the, uh, the natural uh, bacteria or the microbiome within the colon. So those are the side effects. And after that, what do they give you? They now they give you your gut because they know that whatever that procedure may have damaged that uh, the natural uh, gut flora. So they give you your gut thinking that, oh, you think they are looking after you because they think that, okay, if they give you your gut, it's gonna to help to repopulate the, uh, the, not the uh, bacteria population they, they would have damaged. So they don't realize that, okay, in theory, Naturally, your gut is good because you got those uh, live bacteria there uh, for the digestive system. But the problem with the yogurt is that uh, the bacteria there, they are not concealed. They do not, they cannot reach that area of the colon where they are needed. They get digested or they get affected by the digestive juices. So they don't actually reach the normal col colon. That's the targeted area where they are needed. So it is. It is when people start thinking, oh, your gut is good, but your gut, those bacteria, they don't reach the targeted area because of uh, being destroyed by the uh, digestive juices as already as I've repeated to give you better understanding. So they pass that water through there and they, they make sure the water is a bit warm to make to give you a nice warm feeling. So, but uh, this is not the natural way nature intends when you're going through all this colonic irrigation or hydrotherapy uh, way of dislodging the feces. So, and uh, one of the, as I said, one of the side effects of this, uh, that treatment, you get cramps and uh, you get mineral imbalance, I already mentioned. Again, the, during that procedure of insertion of the pipe, through the anus, they can actually perforate that area. You can get infection. This is a feedback I've, I got from some of the people who came to see me after that procedure. They ended up coming to see me because they've, uh, they, were, they had infection after that procedure. 
and uh, you get depletion of good um, uh, bowel flora, sorry, they mentioned. And again, you know, you never know. They, some of them, this is rare. This is the, in rare cases you find it's uh, that procedure can affect the kidneys and also the heart, according to information I got from the patients who had that procedure done some years ago. So now I'm glad to see that uh, doctors are now recommending nutritional approach, asking people now, because again, because of pressure, because of, uh, you know, with internet, internet, there's a lot of information. People are reading, people are not as stupid as before. So now they go to doctor, they ask you so many questions. You know, because doctors, they don't want to lose their patients. They have to now start reading about the natural way to prevent being constipated. So they are now recommending all these fibers, natural fibers. You can see that's uh, red onions, which contains a lot of natural uh, fiber. There, that contains what you call prebiotic, just like we have in the aloe. They're recommending them to have a nice uh, uh, carrots. All these things they are very, very important to help to create that natural flow within the digestive system. Very, very important. You can see garlic there containing allicin. I'm going to talk more about it later. Let's move on. So these are the vegetables which are known to detox the big intestine or the colon. You can see there, skooma. Very, very important. They call it kale because it contains a lot of sulfur. Sulfur is very, very important to help natural, not the one made in the lab, but natural sulfur helps to detoxify that area of, this, of the colon. And it, it contains a lot of this, uh, uh, what you call glu glu glutathione, which is a super antioxidant, very, very important for the digestive system. So that's, you get it from uh, this type of vegetables. Sprouts, kale, contains a lot of that. And the, the fiber, the, the fiber contain, uh, so the fiber is very, very important fiber. Um, it's because what you do when you're eating all this, especially the one you don't cook, what they do, they bind, they make sure they're able to bind to any, uh, metal that can be caused can cause toxic you know we call it toxic metal so we refer to this type of fiber inside the vegetables as a toxic metal binder which helps to, to remove any heavy metals which can be uh which can have a lot of side effects within the colon so it is important to consume vegetables this is what i'm trying to emphasize here so as you can see, they, they call, we refer to this type of vegetable as cruciferous, okay? They are very, very important for the digestive system. You can see these are cheaply available in this country. We're very, we're very, very fortunate. We can see my favorite there, cauliflower. Again, also nowadays, before you eat them, because they are sprayed with a lot of uh, chemicals, we normally say that uh, soak them in the sodium bicarbonate for about 20 minutes before you cook them. Very, very important. This one contains a lot of sulfur compound, which is very, very healthy for the colon, for the health of the colon. Very, very important that we consume all these type of vegetables on a regular basis. So they contain what you call antioxidant. As you can see, this, this one is non-digestible type of fiber. We have both soluble and insoluble fiber. So the, not, the insoluble ones is the one that is going to have to give the push. You can see this, you can see the, a lot of like, uh, you can see all these different vegetables here. They actually increase the bulk to give it the push so you don't get constipated. Very, very important. It's not only for rabbits, we now recommend it for, we, for good healthy digestive system. So, uh, and the non, the soluble ones that like oats, they are also very, very important fiber, soluble fiber for the for digestive health, and flax seed also known to help to put to get that push so you don't get constipated. Water is very, very important. So sometimes when some people, you know, they don't drink enough water, and they start when people need, they have headaches, I always ask them, how much water are you taking, because sometimes the brain is so stupid you cannot tell the difference between food between hunger and thirst so i always tell people if you have a headache make sure you take water maybe your body is dehydrated so and some people they just you know i always ask them okay do you base every day say yes so you base you're basing externally but internally and you want to be normal you don't you don't want to be constipated so it's basically what i'm trying to emphasize here is consumption consumption of water just plain water not those ones loaded with all those uh, sugar and all those a uh, lot of additives 
plain water, very, very important. Water is life to prevent constipation. So we recommend a minimum of two liters every day, not in one go, but over the period of 24 hours. Now, if many people were not recommending two to three liters of water to, for good maintenance, uh, for maintenance of good health, very, very important. So this is how the if, uh, beneficial effect of water, good for the kidneys, very, very important for your digestive system, been talking about because you, when, you don't, when you have insufficient amount of water, you, the toxins start to build up and the stool gets really hard. So very, very important. Many, as you can see, there are many people, they are chronically dehydrated because their body is uh, due to deficiency of water intake. So, you know, this is all the beneficial effect of water. Let's move on. As I said about exercise, very, very important. When you exercise, you find that your system, your hormones works, your, your body is now, is after you go for a run or for a walk in the morning, you come back, you're gonna have good smooth bowel movement because everything, the old digestive system is in motion to exit. Very, very important. So sedentary lifestyle is not recommended. You need to exercise for healthy digestive system, especially the colon. So this all the uh, this all we're talking about all this uh, the flora, natural flora within the digestive system. You have the probiotic. Uh, you have the prebiotic, which is what I'll be talking about quickly. And nowadays we are promoting consumption of uh, fermented food, which is good, full of all those good beneficial bacteria. With you know, those bacteria, they're very, very intelligent, I can tell you. Then that would be another day, another session. You know, they communicate genetically. It's just, it's amazing when you start talking about those uh, uh, bacteria for healthy colon. And uh, again, it's linked to your immune system because don't forget those bacteria, they produce the B vitamins and the vitamin K2, they produce that. And they do, they produce the butyric acid, which is also very important for your digestive system. But I want to keep it simple, let me move on. So basically you, what I'm saying here, you need to balance your gut flora. Those bacteria, the good ones, they must, must be more than the population of the bad ones in order to have good healthy col uh, uh, colon. Very, very important. So you see here, yeah, research shows how crucial a healthy gut is, is for your health, is for your overall health and wellness, including your mental health. There's a connection, as I told you, between the digestive system and your brain for your mental and emotional health. Very, very important to make sure that we try and maintain good, healthy colonic health. Okay, these are the, um, for nutrition, no, those are uh, the when people I see again, just just a bit a bit of repetition here. When you are uh, when you are not able to maintain good optimal colonic health, you get poor nutrition uh, absorption, weight gain. It's going to affect your immune system, as I was telling you about those autoimmune diseases, and they eventually if it's not if care is not taken. Uh, you can eventually lead to this, which is what we'll be talking about next week. So a good quality probiotic is very, very, is uh, in your diet is very, very important, essential for the wellness of that colon uh, area. Very, very important. Now here we go. I hope uh, you are all still awake. Yeah, in forever, now talk about forever living products. You know, in forever living products, we have what you call prebiotic, which we have in our aloe. So the prebiotic is just a natural uh, soluble fiber, which you can get in the red onions, as I mentioned earlier on. You can get it in, uh, you can also get it in garlic, you can get it in bananas, which is very, very important because uh, the, the bacteria, the probiotic, they feed with, it's a, you know, prebiotic, prebiotic is a fuel for probiotic. Probiotic cannot live without prebiotic. So I hope you understand that. So they work synergisti synergistically together for the maintenance of good colonic, colonic health. Here, yeah? so just for the benefit, benefit of those who are here for the first time, when we're talking about prebiotic, we mean uh, prebiotic is uh, that the digestible fiber which uh, we get in our aloe. And in addition to our aloe vera, you also get them, the prebiotic, those tiny, tiny fiber, you get them in our uh, forever fiber, containing what you call inulin. So the, we have, uh, we, which contains, the, we have small, small packets, contains about five grams of uh, uh, soluble fiber. 
That's the forever fiber, very important for the health of those bacteria, that's of the feed on. So the, pre, the pre, prebiotic, they stimulate the growth and the activity of the beneficial bacteria. So as I said before, without prebiotics as fuel, the probiotic, they will starve to death. So hence, what do you get? Constipation and compromised immune system. So the probiotic is, that is, uh, is different because the, the prebiotic, the probiotic, they feed on prebiotic. So what did they do? The uh, probiotic, they help in many, many ways because they help to break down uh, and digest food. And they, they're very important for good overall gut health. They really make sure that the, our immune system is working 100%. Very, very important. That's the beneficial effect of probiotic. Very, very, let me move, move on. And yes, as I said here, they produce a lot of things uh, like uh, the neurotransmitters, those were those happy hormones, serotonin, all those, those are all linked to your mood. So these are all part of the beneficial effect of having good probiotics. Very, very important. This is the one that uh, also deals with your brain to give that, uh, to control the way you eat. Leptin, okay, and granulin. But don't, don't, don't let me make it complicated. Let me move on. So here we go. What a, what? This is in forever. We have this solution to prevent or to help people to manage uh, a good, healthy colon. We call it C9, which is a natural nutritional approach in forever. This is a package uh, uh, we have in forever for anybody to uh, manage that. To I, I don't want I don't want to use the word prevent. Okay. So what they do when you give all this uh, natural, scientifically researched food supplement known as C9 to your system, the body will say, thank you, thank you, this is what I've been, I've been looking for. And hence you find that you're able now to have smooth digestive system, no more constipation. So this is the part we have to have to detoxify the system, to make sure we don't become, and the system does not get overloaded with those toxins we've been talking about. It forever is known as C9 pack. It's a good package, well researched by forever living products. So now the, you find here, uh, these are some of the uh, fiber present in the, in the aloe, okay? Aloe vera is anti-inflammatory because it stops, uh, when we talk about inflammation, it's, uh, it's, uh, it stops the bacteria in form uh, formation. It's also helped to get rid of any virus, it's antiviral, and it's uh, also antibacterial. So that's the beneficial effect of uh, our famous the aloe, the one in the, especially the one in the, all of them, anything containing forever aloe, just that's basic, uh, that's what they do. And uh, they have to loosen within the fiber, okay? Uh, they have to loosen any fecal material within the inner lining of the digestive system as already mentioned. So that's the forever fiber I was talking to you about earlier, which is also within the C9 program. This contains five grams of uh, good gluten-free uh, gluten natural uh, fiber. They're very important to, prevent, um, to manage a healthy colonic health. Okay, so they have to restore, and what I was telling you about before, they actually have to, re uh, to restore normal gut, uh, gut uh, uh, movement. That's uh, most, the motion to want you to go to the toilet. And they contain, uh, within the forever uh, aloe vera contains what, digestive enzymes and a lot of amino acids, which is very, very helpful for managing that area of the digestive system known as the colon. So within it, apart from containing a, a, a prebiotic within the aloe, we also have a probiotic in forever, very, very important, uh, good for vegetarian. This is a, a, it's in capsule, we know, known as Pro-B. So I'm not showing the picture because many of you, some of many of you, you've seen it before. So I just want to move on quickly. So the probiotic we, are, we have within forever is very, very important to increase the population of those uh, good bacteria to help to help in the management of good colonic health. So the, the capsule is, uh, is encapsulated in vegetarian capsule. So it's good for vegetarian, very, very important. And uh, they contain all those six beneficial bacteria to help with that area of the digestive system. You don't need to refrigerate, you don't need to put them in the fridge. They just, you just take one uh, for 
the management of a good bowel movement. But if somebody is seriously, seriously uh, having issues with the, uh, with the colon, I recommend they have one in the morning, they can have it with water or with the aloe, and they have another one at bedtime. So that will help to resolve that issue with constipation, obviously with the aloe, because aloe will create uh, better absorption. And, uh, and the, you know, it's a food in a glass, that's what I call the aloe for maximum absorption of other nutrients. So we have the fields of greens, which will contain a lot of fiber and it contains, uh, you know, we're talking about wheatgrass, which to, and other, other uh, we're talking about, uh, um, there are so many other things, I'm, I'm moving fast now. So the fields of greens are very, very beneficial and also it gets rid of uh, any unwanted hormones. Those we call it xenoestrogen, which can also affect the digestive system. So it's uh, it's alkaline. So it's uh, remember I told as I mentioned the uh, the the uh, no, um, cancer cells they grow in acidic environment. So this is another one which to neutralize any effect of uh, acidity in the system. So we have our forever super greens containing uh, both over twenty vegetables and fruits. Very very important. Also it's pH balance. So you just, it's in a sachet, you just put one, what I normally do, I put one sachet of our forever super greens, I mix it with one sachet of algae plants and one scoop of a forever light ultra. That's a good balanced food for me in the morning and it keeps me going all day long. It's very, very good for digestive health, for the colonic health. Very, very, it's highly recommended. That's our forever super greens, which at the moment we don't have. And at the moment we don't have the forever fields of greens. I hope they are coming in soon. The lysium is very, very important important for the colonic health because the lysium plus is, um, we call it a yin yang, you know, it's for balancing. It's very, very important, contain a lot of antioxidants, especially for people who are, you know, I've mentioned, I mentioned about ulceration of that area of the inner lining of the colon. So the lysium plus is very, very important for, uh, for rebuilding that ulcerated area. So very, very important, you get, you know, the inner lining, which is only one cell and thick, is uh, very, very delicate. So you get a new renewal of that area between, between three to five days, you get new, uh, you, you get new formation of the inner lining. So, so when you take the aloe, which gives a maximum absorption for all the other supplements I'm talking about now, you put forever lysium plus. It's amazing to for anybody who has issues with ulceration of that area, in that area. We call it lysium plus because it's not only from the fruit lysium barbarous, barbarum, it also contains, uh, uh, additionally contains licorice. Licorice is very, very important. It's a natural one. It's the very important for uh, anywhere where there's a formation of ulcer. So working with lysium, very good product by Forever Living Products. Here, another one which I re highly recommended in order to maintain healthy colonic health is garlic thyme. We call it garlic because we've enhanced the potency with thyme, which is a natural herb. And uh, very, very important. Again, don't forget, as I mentioned before, it contains natural sulfur. And not, sulfur is very, very important to, to, to manage, and I don't want to use because we don't, you, we don't have any product that cures uh, in forever. The, when you give this product to the system, this, this is the body and God that does the curing. So you give this essential where it's that natural supplement to, uh, to manage any condition, then the body says, wow, this is what I've been looking for. And they sit, if you really, if you comply, if you comply properly, you follow the proper instruction, you start to get better. So the, our garlic type is very, very potent, very important. It's not only for maintaining good health, uh, uh, blood pressure, it's also good for the health of the digestive system. Very, very important, especially when we're talking about the, the colon. And in addition to that, you find that uh, we have uh, absorbent C, which contains is a chewable uh, vitamin C, antioxidant, also important for that area. And uh, again, when, you com when it's combined together, it's very important for this super antioxidant in terms of managing good colonic health. Now I put human blend there. Human blend, remember, if you want to have healthy digestive system, because that area is also, it's, it, it, uh, 
you need your immune system to be functioning properly. So by having immune blend from forever helps also to maintain good optimal health of the, co of the colon. So because the immune blend, it contains a varieties of antioxidants and those mushrooms, we call it healthy mushrooms, they're known as beta glucan. Very, very important for immunity of that area, apart from general immune system. So I put this one here. We don't have it in Kenya, but in other countries, because there are other people listening to me from in other countries where they have them, they may still have a better care. I normally recommend a better care together with uh, uh, omega-3 fish oil to for it, because both of them being that a better contains a lot of antioxidants, Okay, you can see vitamin A and from beta carotene and the antioxidant vitamin E. So they're very, very important for renewal of the inner lining of that area of the colon. So without, uh, without minerals, vitamins will not work. They work synergistically together. You need minerals. Nature means is very, very important because part of the ingredients in nature mean is uh, magnesium. You know, magnesium, as mentioned earlier, is very important for muscular uh, movement for to exit. Very, very important. Apart from it's important for all those basic cellular, uh, cellular health, like for your enzyme, for your hormones. Very, very important. So if you don't have, if, if no, uh, it, you know, uh, this one also contains selenium. So which you, I'll be talking about next week, the beneficial of uh, selenium in the nature mean. So very, very important for digestive health. Now, yeah, in the, another one we have in forever is forever daily, which contains over 55 different uh, nutrients, well-researched, very important. Also it contains CoQ10 enzyme, very, very important for energy. Remember I told you that people when they are constipated, they suffer from fatigue. So part of the ingredients uh, in uh, Forever Daily is CoQ10, very, very important for cellular health, uh, for, for increase of that energy, which is, uh, I don't want to be too technical, but uh, it's very good when you're talking about energy of, at cellular levels, very, very important for the mitochondria. So very important to have your minerals because without minerals, as I said, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, vitamins, they will not work optimally. So the major benefits of our nutrition food supplement from forever, because they're also the anti-inflammatory, they modulate the immune system. So in some cases, some people, they need, especially those on uh, immunosuppressing drugs, those who have had the organ transplant, they need our products like the aloe, they work by modulating the immune system. So it's not too high, it's not too low, because if it's too high, you're gonna, the organs can be rejected. So that's the effect, that's the beneficial effect of the aloe vera. And our products also, they help to, uh, to optimize that cognitive function. They're very important. They also help to boost the uh, energy, uh, so you don't have issues with fatigue. They improve your sleeping pattern, especially the aloe, together with other supplements like the royal jelly and forever, which is very good for also digestive health, very good to support the skin and promote general uh, wellness. Very, very important, which is also, that's uh, when you get good general wellness, or it's, going, it's going to result in what we know as regular bowel movement with ease, no more constipation. It's just truly, you are not straining the toilet anymore because again, when you start straining, straining all the time, some people, they end up developing what you call varicose vein. Do you find that the veins, they start now, they, they start getting affected. Uh, they start to get weak. That's the end, uh, that's the, that ends. The weakening of that, the vein because of too much training all the time can result in varicose veins. That's another topic, topic for another training. So let me move on. Okay, so in life, you can choose which path you want. You can choose either to go the most, uh, the, the most natural way, consuming those beneficial vegetables containing a lot of antioxidants, contain a lot of sulfur compound for maintenance of optimum uh, colon, colonic health, or you can choose the, all this garbage are called devoid of nutrients, which is going to constipate you like no man's business, passes through like rabbits. You don't want that. So it's always, for me, I'm, I'm, I recommend that you go this way, the natural way, very, very important to maintain good optimal colonic health. So here, pathway to restore healthy colon. So you need all these ma macronutrients. Macronutrients are referred to, you need your essential fats, 
very, very important. You need your carbohydrate to balance for energy and you need your protein. Protein for renewal, cellular renewal to make new you all the time. Very, very important. The good protein. These are known as macronutrients, which they are required for general uh, good health. So here we do know these are referred to as micronutrients like vitamins and minerals. Those are very, very essential for cellular health. So very, very important when we're talking about good, healthy colon. The quality of whatever you take is also very, very important. You need to be consuming food rich, rich. You now, when you're talking about you're cooking your food, make sure they are, they are not nutritionally deficient, don't overcook. You can't cook your food to death. So you find that all the nutrients, they're still preserved. You stay fry in good oil, not in those that set to a room temperature, which can clog up the system. So rich, uh, very, very important. And again, we're now, this is another, what is going on nowadays. Now, Kenya is now declared as a GMO country. And uh, I wouldn't want to say anything until next week about that. Genetically modified food is not the way forward for good colonic health. You know, remember, imagine combining this with glyphosate, combining it with all those artificial uh, fertilizers. Oh, wow. I don't want to say I reserve my comment at the moment. So whatever you consume, you make sure it's genetically free. In America, with, it's so lucky you can choose depending on your consciousness, whether you want to go the healthy way or the rubbish way. All right. So many of the food, they are labeled. You go to the shop, you can choose, OK, whether they are labeled properly, GMO free or ordinary one. So you can you have that choice. But at the moment, we don't know that about here yet. So very, very important to make sure you are not you are not consuming. Uh, well, I don't know. Because, uh, the, old, the way it's going now, is, I don't know how, what we, how we're going to do. That's why you need to be using our products you don't, so you don't become a candidate for cancer. So now, non-toxic, you know, the food you are consuming, make sure it's pesticide free. This is why I said you can soak your vegetables in so in a bicarbonate of soda in water for about 20 minutes. Even I look because again, when you are when you are in our industry in forever living products, you got to make you use, use all your senses. When you go to the shop, you no, know, you look go to the uh, vegetable play uh, where they say vegetables. They say they have a veggie ve called a veggie wash. Look at the ingredients. Yeah, for me, I would not recommend it. All right, I, I, I stop. I won't say anything, but I would not recommend it. Those one they call veggie wash. You know, when you look at the ingredients, you really need to be observant when you're in this industry. Use all your senses. Very, very important. So the pathway to restore healthy colon. What are the pathways? Stop eating processed, highly processed junk food. Anything that comes in the box. You can just occasionally dip it. Don't make a habit of it. Otherwise, you pay the, you pay the price. You eat more, consume more of the plant-based food, fresh, organic, we recommend. All right, limit your consumption of alcohol because we know that alcohol is a digestive irritant, which is known to increase in inflammation of that area of the colon. Avoid coffee. No, otherwise reduce consumption of coffee because as I already said, which is known to be gut irritant and it also it causes a poor absorption of all your nutrients. Actually, it can drain you of all the essential, essential minerals. Uh, so again, I know we are a tea drinking nation, Tea is not too much tea is not good because it contains tannic, tannic acid, which tends to bind to minerals. So you may be saying you're taking our products, but if you can, if you also, if you always drink tea, 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 you're going to start to look to lose your uh, minerals. Okay, so take probiotic after a course of antibiotics. Now, maybe two to four weeks, so very, very important in order to rebuild the population of those beneficial bacteria again. Very, very important to be taking our pro B. Avoid antibiotics. No, for me, I, antibiotics are good because so I don't want you to hear from people telling me that you know, people say, oh, just because they must not take antibiotics. For God forbid, antibiotics has got its own place. It's got its own beneficial effect. For example, if you have a child who's having well, what you call meningitis, and this is a life and death situation, you need to do immediately intravenous antibiotics to that, stop that child from dying because that meningitis is a, it's a terrible infection. 
So if it's the, the bacteria meningitis, you need to do intravenous antibiotics quickly to save that child from dying. So antibiotics got its own benefit. It's only now when you're using it on a regular basis, you're dishing it out, you're, the way some of the doctors are dishing out them out like sweets, that's where it becomes dangerous. Because as I said before, it can cause leaky gut syndrome. It can cause a variety or catalog with so many uh, 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 a negative effect on the on the digestive system. Now, also painkillers, you know, it's good for uh, acute management, but when it comes to uh, chronic management of different conditions, I would not recommend you keep on taking all those non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, okay? Instead, reach for the aloe. When you want to look at, uh, for ulcer, that's what they use most of the time, you find that it's got negative effect on ulcer, um, causing a lot of issues because I'm dealing with all those people who have been on those uh, treatments for ulcers, those uh, trip treatments, and they end up having issues with the digestive system. They can make, they can make, they become deficient of calcium and so many other minerals. So that's another topic for another day. So these are known to cause, you know, what the one of the side effects of painkillers, especially those non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, they are known to cause internal bleeding, intestinal bleeding, and eventually uh, responsible for that situation as a leaky gut syndrome. Okay, and relax, very, very important, relax and take, take, you no, know, take long breath before each meal. Don't eat in a hurry. Take your time, he said, it's my time, so that your food can now, you know, some people say, oh, you are what you eat. You are not only what you eat, you are what you, you can be eating, but you may not be digesting. And apart from not digesting, you may not be absorbing. So you may be nutrition deficient or nutri nutrition deficient because you are not able to, you always live in a stressful situation. You're always uh, eating on the go. You don't take time. You have to have meal time where you can now enjoy your food uninterrupted, very, very important. You put away the telephone, anything that's gonna cause you to be, to be uh, stressful, it's your mid time. Make sure that you relax and have your food, very, very important. And this is very, very important nowadays. And in the nutritional world, it's called intermittent fasting. This is very, very important. So now to give the digestive system a rest, it's not just eat, eat all the time. You can give a gap. No, maybe you just eat once or twice a day. You don't need to be eating three times, especially as you're getting on a bit. You don't need all that, a lot of food. So you don't eat on the go all the time. You do what we call intermittent fasting. So you give that window gap for your digestive system to repair itself. This is very, very important to promote good uh, that gut function, as you can see, the intermittent fasting. If you don't know, go and read more and search on the internet. There's a wealth of information when we're talking about intermittent fasting for the health of the colon and the rest of the digestive area. So now the pathway to restore, the, to restore good healthy colon is to lose weight. I remember I told you about obesity. Obesity is, you know, is responsible for many, many uh, digestive issues apart from cancer. And they also try to reduce your salt intake. It's not only to do with your blood pressure, too much salt is not, is not advisable. Now, what I recommend instead of that table salt, I recommend this, we are calling pink salt. They're available on the market here or sea salt also very good to maintain good blood pressure. Don't forget about, life, about what I've already mentioned it. And again, I advise people, for me, because of my background, I always ask people, go for reg regular health check. Don't just, don't, don't, no, very, very important. You don't, so you remember what we next we'll be talking about cancer. Many people, they ignore until that cancer gets to stage four. You should go for med regular checkup, annual regular checkup to make sure Everything is intact. Don't wait until something gets out of hand. And uh, this is what is happening for many, many people. By the time they seek medical help, it's too late. God forbid. We don't want that. It's always good. Go and find out. If you have issues, don't wait till it gets out of hand. Again, this, so we're talking about social cycle here. Connect with others. You laugh, you learn. You know, laughing, they said it increases the endorphins and uh, happy mood, very important for your digestive system as well. And again, very, very important if you 
Uh, it's important to learn to forgive anybody sort of uh, don't carry those baggage because it can affect you cause stress which is not good when we talk about digestive pills so they're very important don't carry i'm saying this because uh, we are when i used to work in different hospitals before when you go on the ward rounds you find that some of the patients there they're so bitter about life they keep on blaming everybody this responsible for them being there and all that and uh so, and those people, because, uh, you know, those are especially the cancer wards, so they don't, they don't survive because they are so bitter about everything. So it's always very, very important not to carry all those garbage. Very, very important. Just leave it and leave it to go to your creator. And as you can see, the last one here, be grateful to your creator. Be appreciative. Gratitude is everything. You know what, no matter what situation is, always show gratitude that will help you whatever condition you may find yourself it will help you to get better very very important so this is the end of my presentation thank you very much for listening to me asante nisana hello i finished asante pia okay asante pia that's a new <laughs> word for me to learn <laughs> okay thank you. Thank you for the training. So, yeah, you know, today we finish on that digestive health, that part of the of the digestive health, which is the colon. Mm. So in the celebration of Colonic Health Month or uh, the health awareness of the colon for the month of March. So part two will be next week. Okay. I hope, uh, yeah, okay, all right. Is everybody happy? Those who are still on the, pl on the platform? Yeah, we have more than 70 people on the platform, so I believe we're happy. Okay, that's good. And uh, just help me to promote all these products. As uh, if you've gone, uh, my passion is the health of the nation because we are very lucky in Forever Living products to have the, all this amazing food supplement to, to help to 